Hey there guys, it's Tina and Christmas is over. <laughs> it's the day after Christmas and wow, it's that lull between, you know, the excitement of Christmas and all the get togethers and festivities and then before the New Year's. So I find that December is such a great time for reflection for the year that has um, gone before us, but especially these last few days of the year, I really like to just hone in and reflect on what God has done for me the year before and what I'm anticipating in the year to come. And so today's devotion, actually in scripture, I've had a lot going on in my head um, scripture wise. So I'm gonna try to tie it all together for you today and and pray that it blesses you. But we're actually going to look at scripture in those days following Jesus' birth and something really cool that happens that takes us all the way back to the beginning of the New Testament. So if you are joining this channel for the first time, welcome to Dirt Road Believer. I'm going to share with you just a few pictures from on my side of the family's Christmas. We got to get away for a few days to Callaway Gardens and it was so much fun. So I'm going to share a little bit of that with you. We had a 80th birthday celebration for my dad there. So enjoy these pictures and videos and I will be right back with today's devotion. Don't bump your head. Back up, you don't bump heads with it. Head, shoulders, knees, shoulders, head, knees, shoulders, get. <laughs> To today's devotion and what I'm praying for is that this devotion will cause you to really go in depth in your time of reflection in these next few days before 2024 and we're gonna look at just after the birth of Jesus kind of that that lull that we're experiencing now um, after the the celebration of his birth what happens and it's gonna lead us to um, a man named Simeon. So in, this is the account in uh, chapter two of Luke. And in verse 21, it says, when the eight days were completed for his circumcision, he was named Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived. And when the days of their purification, according to the law of Moses were finished, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Now, I want us to stop for just a minute and realize that the law, so we have a sweet little Jewish family, right? And the law that they were following was established through who? Through Moses. I want you to remember that because we're going to talk more about Moses later. And then in verse 25, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to Israel's consolation, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he saw the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, he entered the temple 
When the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him up in his arms, praised God, and said, Now, Master, you can dismiss your servant in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation. You have prepared it in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory and glory to your people Israel and his mother and father were simply amazed about what was being told said about him and then Simeon blessed them and told his mother Mary indeed this child is destined to cause the fall and rise of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed and a sword will pierce your own soul that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed okay so I love this scripture about Simeon because Simeon had ha, had followed the Lord closely and it had been revealed to him before you die you're going to meet Jesus you are going to meet the one that I have prophesied about from the beginning and so I think about Simeon that day and you know he was a churchgoer he was in the temple all the time and so for him to be going to the temple this day probably you know was not anything special to him he was he was prompted in some way because it says guided this is verse 27 guided by the spirit he entered the temple this wasn't uncommon for him this was something he did all the time but god in his infinite wisdom and timing timed it so that simeon entered the temple the same time the baby jesus did and he just knew it he just knew it and what i want to point out to you is that simeon was guided by the holy spirit and and there's no telling how many people had passed by mary and joseph and the baby jesus that day either in the temple on the way to the temple and they did not recognize him but because simeon was serving god and he allowed himself to be guided by the Spirit of God. He recognized him and um, he praised God for this Savior that came into the world. And I wonder that we don't have an account of Simeon's lineage, of how many people before him served God, but we can go back and point to the one who the law came from. The whole reason that Simeon was in the temple that day, that Jesus was in the temple that day, that their lives intersected, that he, that Simeon said, okay, I can die now. Like I've seen the Christ. I can die now in peace is because of the law of, we mentioned this earlier, Moses. And so I want to backtrack a little bit and look at the life of Moses. And we began to see that it didn't start with Moses. It started a lot further back than Moses. And that's that. I want that to be our, our jumping off point for reflection. So if you go back to Exodus 1, you'll read about the midwives that were ordered by the king. This, this was in Egypt. And all the um, Israelite baby boys, you'll remember, were to be killed when they were born. And that task was given to two midwives in Exodus chapter 1. And they refused. They feared God. They were guided by his spirit, just as Simeon was. And they didn't do it. They said, we would rather risk our lives and die than to do away with these Israelite babies. And so they were quest you'll remember they were questioned by the king and they gave the most bogus story. They were like, oh, Israelite women, Hebrew women, they're totally different than Egyptian women. And when they have a baby, it happens so fast and furious. Like we can't even, we can't even catch the baby. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Something along those lines. But they were the first ones to say, we won't do it. We'll put ourselves at risk, but we fear God enough and we have enough faith that we are not going to do this. Well, then when that didn't work, 
you'll remember the king says, okay, every family who has a baby boy, you're supposed to throw the baby boy into the river. And then these two very sweet Hebrew, God-fearing man and woman have a little baby named Moses. And because of their great faith, they hide him for three months. And then, guided by the Spirit, they put him in a special basket that floats. And that baby winds up where? In Pharaoh's home after a time. So the story of Moses is so detailed and intricate, I can't even begin to, to go into it. But the midwives showed faith that saved the baby boys. Then Moses' parents showed faith that saved his life. He went on to be raised in the palace. He decided, I don't want this. No matter how much wealth, no matter how much uh, stuff I have, I'm going to leave it because... I belong to God. I'm going to give all that up. And then he meets his father-in-law, Jethro, another person of, of the story in his life. And I want us to look in, and all of this precedes his going to uh, Egypt to um, for the mass exodus of the Hebrews. All of this precedes the Ten Commandments, the Promised Land, all of the things that Moses did with his life and his ministry. And I want to read to you, this is in the Hall of Faith, Hebrews 11, beginning in verse 23. It says, By faith, Moses, after he was born, was hidden by his parents for three months because they saw that the child was beautiful and they didn't fear the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter and chose to suffer with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasure of sin. For he considered reproach for the sake of Christ to be greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt since he was looking ahead to the reward. By faith, he left Egypt behind not being afraid of the king's anger, for Moses persevered as one who sees him who is invisible. By faith, he instituted the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn might not touch the Israelites. By faith, they crossed the Red Sea as though they were on dry land. When the Egyptians attempted to do this, they were drowned. That's what's recorded in the New Testament about Moses and his faith, and it goes back to the faith of his parents. We have a few days before the new year, and I want us to use the life of Moses and all those who led up to, um, you know, the, the monumental things that he did for our faith. They were faith-filled people who did exactly what is said about Moses in verse 26. For he considered reproach for the sake of Christ to be greater wealth than all the treasures of Egypt since he was looking ahead to his reward. How many people who have influenced you, who have been a part of the faith that you have today, considered reproach for the sake of Christ because they were willing to have something eternal rather than what's right in front of you. They were willing to risk or give up something that they tangibly had in order to display great faith and the fear of God. I love looking at Moses because Moses is in our faith lineage as well. And it, it Moses just didn't appear one day and have this great faith. He had a lineage of faith. And you know, when I read um, Hebrews 11, the great chapter, the hall of faith, I think about how many people, what a great cloud of witnesses have gone before us. And you know, we've got all these gifts lying around. Kids gifts, your gifts, pets gifts. <laughs> and you look at them and I think, what is the gift that 
continues to give eternally. And that is the same gift that the midwives gave, the same gift that Moses' parents gave, that Jethro gave, that all the people along his path gave, and that is the gift of faith. Guys, I encourage you to live it, to speak it, to testify to it, and really reflect this week on why you are where you are in your faith. A lot of it has to do with the people who have displayed such great faith in your life. So spend time thanking God for those people. And then looking ahead to 2024, I want to be that. I want to be that person who displays such great faith that what is in front of me and what I could have tangibly or, you know, the, the ladders that I could climb, I consider reproach for the sake of Christ to be greater than all the treasures of this world. Guys, I hope that this devotion has spoken to you today. I hope you will spend time meditating on it. And I pray that you are having a wonderful little season of rest and relaxation and meditation before the new year comes. We're going to get into something new come next week. So I'll see you back next week. But hey, guys, have a great, happy new year. I will see you after the stroke of midnight next week. Have a great week, and until next time, slow down. Take the dirt road, believer.